Hey everybody, welcome back to Lauren the Amazon Princess RPG and Will here. Um, I did a bunch of training. As you can tell, I got my fame up to 36. It doesn't look like there's anything more I can buy here though, and I leveled up, and I'm feeling okay right now, so I think I'm just gonna leave. It's probably a bad idea, but I saved, so let's do it. The party was refreshed and supplied after a good night's rest in Grimoire. They rose with the sun to leave as soon as possible in their search for Lauren's mother. There we go. Now you're a little closer. Okay. Just before they left the city, they were stopped by city guards. Fearing the worst, they were pleasantly relieved when Apollomesho revealed himself. Leaving without me, princess. Lauren and Saren inspected the old wizard as he approached, surrounded by guards once more. Only this time he was being followed by someone new, a large man with a stern face. We parted ways after I gave you the sword. And here it is again, meaning that our paths must cross once more. He pointed to some guards carrying a long decorative case. They opened it up to reveal the ember blade resting on a cushion of velvet. It truly looked like a weapon meant for the gods. What is the meaning of this? Why have you stopped me? I have learned something very important about the shadow creatures that attacked us those nights ago. Does this really concern me? You're keeping me from my task. This is most certainly concerns you. The whole world is on the precipice of war, and even the Amazons cannot hide from it. Chapter 3. Make this short. Consulting with the Council, we have found that the crystal used to send the shadow could only have been found in the volcanic lands of the Everburn Mountains. Everburn Mountains? That's demon territory. Yes, the home of demons. I fought them before, a long time ago, and they are led by the entity known as Faust. He is bloodthirsty, and if he is behind this attempt to wage war, then he will stop at nothing to have it. A war between elves and humans? What do I care? I fear, Princess, that your mother may be part of Foss Grand Scheme. When I asked you to help the Empire retrieve this sword, it was so we could bring back as a weapon for the Empire to use. For protection only, of course. As you know, the Amber Blade is one of the few swords forged by the gods to endow the world with their might. While a finely crafted piece of steel it is nothing more than in the wrong hands. It will not give its full strength to just any mortal. The mortal must be the strongest and most worthy warrior whom Avalon has to offer. What of this old tale? It is no old tale. It is reality. We all witnessed how this sword reacted to Princess Lauren. The gods have recognized her as worthy as their power. Of course they did. <coughs> Lauren has no fear. Sorry. Sarah, forgive me. Oh, wait, that's me. Ah, dope. The council and I had hoped to give this sword to Grimoire's gracious war. Amu Kiki, the bear, the champion of the arena. He has won tournament after tournament and is the best warrior whom the Empire has ever seen. And yet, he gestured for Amu Kiki to take the sword. Stiffly, he approached the Emperor and took it by the head of the wheel. It did not blow. There is no reaction for the sword, of the sword for him. And much as it troubles us, the sword can only be of use if the sword will recognize its owner. In short, Princess, the Ember Blade is yours. Wow! You're really given her that ancient relic? Present it to her, Amber people. The warrior was rigid in hesitation, and finally held the sword's blade so that Lauren could take it by the hand. Slow. Lauren did just that. Wrapping her fingers around the hilt caused an immediate glow in the sword, confirming that it had truly chosen her. Take care. It stands for more than you know. I shall. <laughs> and what of this man? For years, I have trained to become Grimoire's elite weapon. I was to use the strength of this blade to protect the Empire and the whole of Adamor. 
and now I can only serve to protect the true wielder of the Ember Blade. I hereby pledge myself to protect Princess Lauren of the Amazons, at the cost of my life if necessary. I'm a sword protector, not this guy! That's not necessary. I'm here to protect you. You may return to your life as it was before this moment. Right, we already have enough bodyguards. Thank you and goodbye. My life before was that so. I've already made my own. You jackass! Forcing yourself on us like that. Uh... Here, have a bajillion strength, I guess. There. Shield Aha! Toughness! Toughness! Finish! He stared hard into Saren's eyes as if to warn him not to challenge his devotion again. I will follow the sword as well. It is the Empire's only hope. And so the Amazon Princess is now our only hope. I am not committed to helping the Empire. I will not fight elves. That is unnecessary. The sword will show you your path. I trust that it will be the right one. So now these two guys are following us too. The crazy old guy who nearly killed me, and a guy who looks like he could kill me just by blinking too hard? I agree. Our group is full enough as it is. So long as you help and don't slow me down, I don't care anymore. I just need to leave and find my mother. We shall not burden you, just as before. My grace, you can't be! Saren. Yes. Forgive me. Oh my god, I got all this creaking. In retrospect, the initial tensions between Saren and Amukiki were merely because they were both people desperately searching for recognition in this cruel world. Both were raised as nobodies, and both were given a chance to make something of themselves. For some reason, they believed that only one of them could truly obtain such priceless recognition. You now have more than six party members. Only active members who fight will gain experience from fights and quests. However, you can still level up everyone by altering the formation and returning to old places such as the Temple of Truth. It's up to you to decide. You can keep the same party members throughout the whole game or change them, deciding which character is best suited for each battle. I think I want to take off the old wizard guy so I can have Dora and him in the back row right now. I don't know how successful that would be, but I think it's worth a try. But first, I think it's time to head to camp. Look at all those people. Let's start with... Saren? Yes, mistress. This blade is dull, and I need you to sharpen it. It is too distracting for me to do it myself. Yes, of course. I will tend to it for you. It would be the greatest honor to service this weapon. It's just a sword like any other. You still not do... You st sword believe history, you? Holy relics glows it? Does the? Many things glow in this world. A nightfly glows, but it is not a divine intervention. Yeah. I'm not sure. Those glowy bugs are very suspicious, if you ask me. Global domination, probably. Look, they say this glows for special people, and I fully believe you're special. Why don't you? I'm the heir to the Amazon throne. 
I have many qualifications that make me worthy. But even if the gods themselves wish to bind this sword to me, I do not care. I'm not a tool to be used. Instead, this sword is my tool. We will leave it at that. Okay. That really is all you wanted to say. Okay. Let's talk to Dwarf Guy. Hey, what's up? My ex is getting restless. Oh, really? That's it? That's all you gotta say? Dora? Oh, hi again. That, that's it? Really? Nothing new? Really? Wow. Okay, hulking gladiator. It is my turn to guard the camp. I'm not familiar with the Empire's customs. You have made an oath involving my mistress, and I want to know what that means. The oath I made is not an Empire custom. It is part of my heritage, which makes it much stronger. What is your heritage, if not the Empire? I am from the Nomads, of the South. I have lived within the Empire, and that is all. You defend the Empire as if it were important to you. I have sworn an oath to my nation as well. And if your oath to your nation conflicts with your oath to Lord, I will not harm the wielder of the Ember Blade. We're placing a lot of trust in those words, sir. I will not hesitate to fight you if you break them. I do not break my oaths. But you make several of them, so it's possible that they could conflict. If that were ever the case, I would take my own life. I hope that is not necessary. Now you see, I do not make oaths I cannot keep. As for your oath itself, it is completely unnecessary. I am the sworn protector of Lorne. You're simply redundant. If you have a ritual that retracts an oath, you should perform it now. I will not. Why not? Why must you be sworn by oath to protect someone? Are you afraid that you were not forbidden to kill her that you would? You're jealous of her. I saw how you looked when the sword glowed for her, and not you. How are we to know you will not just kill Lorne in hopes the sword will recognize you instead? That will not happen. And you do not know me to say that it might. Exactly. I don't know you, so you are even more dangerous to have around. I'm sorry to say, my oath makes my presence very permanent. I should remind you that Amazons detest men. If Lorne tolerates you, it is only barely so. I could say the same about you. Lorne may not wish to mate with me, but she knows I have a use just like you. Even the Amazons cannot reject men entirely in their society. As slaves, you mean? They keep men for labor because they know they are stronger. I'm not sure I agree with how you view the Amazons, but that does not concern me. Your priority is to keep Lauren safe and obey her orders. We are in agreement on that, then. Ah. You won many tournaments. How did you do that? It means exactly what it sounds like. I fought in many combative tournaments for honor and glory. I battled men, elves, wizards. And won. I fight every way I will. I take every talent for an enemy. That's how I've become the man I am today. There is no tournament of arms that I have not won, so I was named Grimoire's greatest warrior. Which explains why you had high hopes for the Ember Blade. Yes. I know I am stronger than your Amazon mistress, but I still cannot gain the sword's favor. Careful what you say. You may have more physical strength than Lord, but you will never be stronger willed. Perhaps you misunderstood what it truly means to be great. You said that your purpose in life was the Ember Blade. Why did you live your life for a weapon? The Ember Blade is not just a weapon. It's a holy relic that turns the wielder into a divine hand of justice. To become the voice of the gods is more than enough to devote one's life to. So all these tournaments you fought and won, you didn't do them for fun, but to become worthy of the sword? Yes. Not in the beginning, 
But after my first tournament, the Archwizard told me I had potential of becoming a beacon for mankind. I was honored. Your mistress does not know the gift of being chosen. It doesn't matter in the end. The gods have chosen her, not you. I may have absolutely nothing to do with strength or how many tournaments you've won. The gods need someone who will do the right thing. I believe the princess is such a person. We'll see. You said you're from a group of people called the Nomads. Of the South. Yes, who are they? What are they like? Aren't they like the Empire? No. The people of the Empire live in houses and buy their food from vendors. The Nomads live under the stars and hunt for their food. You're barbarians. Our culture is different, not lesser. That term is not welcome to us. I never thought that term was offensive. I'm sorry. Though it is interesting how you are not quick to judge other cultures just the same. Like the elves, for instance. You know I am right. Are you interested in the nomads or insulting me? I'm sorry. Please tell me about your culture. <laughs> he says nothing! He's like, I fucking refuse. I say nothing, man. And it's like, oh, okay, fine. Jeez. I think I'm gonna save. Alright. That's gonna do it for this episode of Lauren, the Amazon Princess. See you next time, everybody. Hey, this is RPG at Will. I hope you liked this episode of Lauren, the Amazon Princess. If you want to check out some of my other material, you can click on my channel link below, or you can even subscribe if you'd like. I like to do some silly songs on the side, along with my RPG work. If you want to see some more group-oriented stuff, there's another channel called Gaming Idiots TV that I take part in. That's where we do all our group stuff, so I'll provide a link below if you want to check it out there. See you next time.